Hey everybody out there in RC world. Uh, I'm just here to give you what I learned from working on the uh, FPV drone design from uh, Ed at Experimental Airlines. This is two-thirds the uh, scale of what he did. He did a six-inch wingspan. I did here a 40-inch wingspan. But I learned some important things that I think uh, will be very useful for guys who are doing this kind of thing or girls. Okay, so the first thing <clears throat> that I discovered while doing this uh, is that in order to have a reasonable amount of uh, pitch authority, you really got to have nice, big-sized elevators. I don't know if you can see what I did here, but I had to add on, after the fact, uh, some more of these plastic kind of strips from an ice cream um, carton to... Uh, increase the elevator size from one inch to two inches uh, in terms of this dimension here to my thumb and forefinger and another really good thing I learned when doing this is that you kinda wanna have uh, a place to mount your battery forward enough in order to get a reasonable uh, CG location um, and what you need to do is be able to reach it. So I couldn't really reach it from my hatch here. <clears throat> so what I did was I just made this kind of uh, openable nose section here that before I fly I tape it up uh, like this but in the front. The advantage of this is that it provides a couple of things. It provides these air holes for um, cooling of the ESC and the motor and so on. Um, and it also provides uh, for a little bit of a cushioning uh, nose section upon uh, impact in case of a botched landing or whatever. Uh, another very, oh by the way, uh, I did not have the extended nose section here in front that uh, the FPV drone that uh, Ed has because I don't have any uh, camera gear uh, in this guy. He's just for flying. I just wanted to try out the um, canard design here to have basically all the surfaces lifting, which I think is really cool. It provides for really tight turning and so on. You guys probably will investigate that on your own. Um, and the uh, next thing I wanted to accomplish here was a single servo, which you know you probably can see in other places uh, about how this is done. But basically, I'm trying to save weight here. So a single servo is what I used here. It's not going to be as neat and tight in terms of the actual actuation of the full-length ailerons because there's going to be some flex along the length of the aileron in comparison to where the torsional uh, force is being applied. So, <clears throat> but it nevertheless, it works. What I wanted to show here is that you don't have to be like perfect. It can be kind of a little bit sloppy here and it'll still fly just fine as long as you get a few things right. And I'm trying to point out the few things that you need to get right. The other thing you need to get right is the center of gravity. That is absolutely critical. Um, there's a uh, center of gravity calculator for canard wings um, on the web out there. Um, and it's relatively easy to use. But even if you didn't have it, uh, you could get a, a basic idea of center of gravity from the uh, sur uh, surface area the, of the plant form of each one of these wings. They're both essentially wings. You have a front wing, a canard, and a rear wing, which is your main wing, quote unquote. And essentially, based upon the uh, plant form of each one of them, you can figure out how much each one is providing in terms of lift, and then calculate the distance between them, and then get your center of gravity based upon uh, the actual uh, moments being applied. So, you know, if the center of gravity is somewhere around here, so the moment from here to here is a longer moment, then it would be from here to here, from this, this wing to that wing. And it makes sense because this is the smaller wing. So, anyway, enough of that. Um, another important thing I learned is that uh, just because you crash and the body gets a little bit 
bent out of shape, it doesn't make, mean that all is over. You can just kind of straighten it out as best as you can and uh, try it again. As a matter of fact, in this case, because I had a little bit of twist in the fuselage, the forward wing, the canard, was a little bit uh, twisted in comparison. They were not in the same plane in comparison to the rear wing. So, after having crashed and these sections right here having been opened and torn a little bit, it was actually, I was able to glue them together in such a way that um, it was now no longer uh, in the wrong plane relative to the rear wing. Okay, <clears throat> another important thing I learned is that these uh, formers inside in that Ed recommends by the uh, hatch section are absolutely critical uh, because in the case of the crash without those the entire fuselage section would have just folded up. Um, another really really important thing I learned along the way uh, is that uh, you need to have something to prevent really uh, abrupt tip stalling and the way you can achieve that is there's several different ways I think the easiest way is to have a leading edge cuff a drooping le leading edge cuff and I thought well how am I gonna do that I just took a dowel and I put that dowel along the leading edge and taped it simply taped it along here I'm not the best cameraman sorry about that and that provides a drooping leading edge because I was finding that when I was coming in for approach on a slow approach uh, one of the wings would abruptly stall uh, and since the engine was off it wasn't an issue of, of torquing in the opposite direction that the engine was uh, turning and that leads me to the next discussion <clears throat> the engine in this case is turning to the uh, right, the propeller is spinning clockwise. As a result of that, the plane wants to c conserve momentum and turn left. Um, so what I learned is that when hand launching this baby, um, like this, right, so you pick it up and you hold it somewhere near the center of gravity and you hand launch it, great. So when you're hand launching that guy, he's at pretty slow airspeed. And because of that, the tendency to torque in the, for the body to roll in the opposite direction, in this case counterclockwise to, from the engines turning, is going to be quite exaggerated. So what I learned is that you need really to put in quite a bit of right aileron trim prior to tossing that baby up in the air. And then once you get up in the air and things are going smoothly, you'll notice that because of all that, heavy right aileron trim you put in, uh, you're going to tend to roll to the right once you get it up to proper speed. So then you got to retrim it back to center essentially. Also when you're tossing that thing up in the air, you really got to trim out because you, you uh, are not going to have time to control it immediately. It takes whatever, a second, a second and a half for you to grab that control stick after tossing it and start controlling the airplane. So you need to um, trim the elevator appropriately for the takeoff, uh, takeoff launch from your hand. So you set whatever th you think is appropriate, and then you must do a glide test, preferably over some tall grasses, or in, the, in my case, the f a field of wheat, and <clears throat> toss that guy over. Uh, the wheat so that you get a sense of how it's gonna launch without this in this case with any without any power you just leave the power off you toss it and you see how it glides and if it you know violently uh, rolls one way or another you know adjust the trim appropriately or if it pitches up or or, or down too much adjust the uh, elevator trim appropriately and then you'll know um, after playing with it whether or not it's gonna um, launch relatively well with power on and then it will and this is absolutely critical um, and as a result of all the 
times that I did not do that, uh, the uh, plane had uh, nose down or whatever and uh, got pretty messed up. I put a little landing strut here in the front uh, because I was finding that that helped especially when there was for whatever reason a botched landing and it would kind of uh, absorb a lot of the impact either going uh, nose down attitude or like this and anyway the bottom line is that uh, this guy has to be done fairly strong what I noticed was just ripping off if I hadn't done it very very strong with a lot of hot glue and so on uh, I like these guys a lot in the sense that it's a lot better than balsa because with balsa you you crash this guy nose first if it was balsa it would just shatter you know halfway down the fuselage into a million little balsa pieces this just kind of gets mushed in at the nose maybe bends a little bit along the body of the fuselage uh, along the length of the fuselage but it's essentially easily repairable um, oh another thing important uh, make your uh, vertical stabilizers bigger than you think you need them. <laughs> uh, the reason why is because you really want that um, tendency to yaw in the wrong direction to kind of self-correct itself. And if not, it gets really difficult to control. So make your vertical stabilizers quite large. Uh, a rule of thumb uh, can be found on uh, experimental airlines from Ed, uh, and follow that rule of thumb. Um, so that's a lot of the important details I think uh, you guys should know in order to do one of these uh, canard designs. And some of these uh, little pieces of advice can be found in other places. I just thought it would be uh, useful to kind of put it all together. Um, and I do not have a, a video of this guy flying yet, but I hope to put one up soon. Although I've flown it many times, but the one, the video that was taken by my son and by, by my wife didn't really come out well. So we're going to try that again. My son has flown this one. He's flown uh, conventional design many times. He's 13 years old, and, and, uh, and this one he fi finds a little bit more challenging because of its really tight turning and its really low wing loading. Um, and it kind of like flutters around a lot in uh, strong breezes, even though it's uh, once, if you let go of the controls, once it's properly trimmed, it flies straight as an arrow uh, and quite level uh, as long as there's no wind. However, if you kind of, uh, you know, do some sudden input of the controls, it kind of really uh, flutters around a lot because it's, it's got a really low wing loading. All right, I hope that uh, will be useful for some of you out there. Good luck.